Hey everybody, what's going on? It's episode 43 of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, and today we're going to talk all about Chuck Norris. I'm your host, Jeremy Lesniak, and I'm also Whistlekick's founder. Here at Whistlekick, we make the world's best sparring gear and some great apparel and accessories for traditional martial artists. Thanks to everyone tuning in again, and thank you to any of the new folks checking us out for the first time. Don't forget, you can find all of our past podcast episodes, show notes for this one, and a lot more at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And while you're on our website, go ahead and sign up for our newsletter. We offer exclusive content and discount to subscribers. It's also the only place to find out about upcoming guests on the show. We make a lot of different things here at Whistlekick, and one of our most popular items is our polyester t-shirts, our no-sweat line. They're really lightweight, and they fit great under a uniform. You can get them in six different colors, and they're really just great. I love mine. Uh, Well, mine. I have more than one, but the red one's the one I wear the most. And even if you don't like to wear anything under your martial arts uniform, they're a great shirt to work out in or just hang out. So check out our no-sweat shirts and the rest of what we offer at whistlekick.com. So let's talk about Chuck Norris. Everyone knows who Chuck Norris is, mostly because of his acting. With 38 different acting credits to his name, it's a good bet that he's the most prolific American martial arts actor of all time. I mentioned in the Bruce Lee episode that we did a couple weeks ago that Chuck Norris's first role was actually a minor one in the 1968 film The Wrecking Crew, which starred Dean Martin. There's a lot more to Chuck Norris than his acting, though. It seems that these days he's really known more for the, the memes that go around the internet and his political views, and still his acting, but not a lot of people know his martial arts history. And to me, that's the more fascinating part about Chuck Norris. Born in 1940 in the Midwest, his actual name is Carlos Ray Norris, and not Charles, like most people assume. And he got that Chuck name when he went into the service. But he had a pretty rough childhood. His family was poor, his father was an alcoholic, and he actually described himself as non-athletic and shy, which is pretty amazing when you look at who he is now and what he's known for. And even further, the, the irony of coupling that with all of these supposed Chuck Norris facts of how strong and, and everything he is. But I also find it interesting that there's a lot of martial artists who describe themselves as being shy and non-athletic as children. I'm certainly in that group. And if you listen to the episode with John Graydon a few weeks ago, he was actually pretty adamant that there was a, maybe adamant's the wrong word, he was pretty direct that he felt there was a, a profile that most martial artists fit from their childhood, and he was in that group as well. But at 18, Chuck Norris joined the Air Force, and he was sent over to Korea. And that's the martial arts origin story for a lot of the American martial artists that are now in their 70s. They went over in the 50s, in the 60s. They learned martial arts on or near uh, a military base. But he actually started out training in judo, and really quickly, I think it was within a couple weeks, he broke his shoulder. So he went and he asked his instructor, hey, I saw these guys doing this other thing. Uh, Do you mind if I go do that until I heal up? And his instructor said, yeah, that's fine. And that's when he started training in Tang Soo Do. But the original intention was that he was going to drop Tang Sudo, go back to Judo once he healed up. And even though he did go back and train some Judo, you know, once a week or so, once he was healed, Tang Sudo was really where his love for the martial arts was. So it took him just over a year to earn his black belt. It was actually his second attempt. He failed his first try at passing the test. And then four years after moving to Korea, he comes back to the United States and started opening up martial arts schools and opened well over 30 schools. And he referred to them as karate, which was pretty common from what I've read back in that time. People knew the martial arts as karate. It was kind of um, an equivalent term back then. And he had quite a few famous students, uh, Donnie and Marie Osmond, Priscilla Presley, and Steve McQueen. And Steve McQueen becoming a student is pretty significant because it was McQueen who really pushed him to start acting. But 
before any of that happened, he started competing. In his first two tournaments, he lost. But he didn't lose to just anybody. He lost to Joe Lewis and Alan Steen. So no, um, not really a big blight on your record to start doing something and lose to two of the greats of all time. But he trained hard, got better, and in 1967, by 1967, he earned victories over Joe Lewis, Skipper Mullins, Victor Moore, Ron Marchini, and Steve Sanders. So you can certainly say that he went, you know, about as far as, as he really could in a pretty short period of time. And in early 1968, he suffered what looks to be the last loss he ever suffered in competition. It was the 10th time he ever lost, and it was to a gentleman named Louis Delgado, who he actually came back later that year and won against. And in winning that victory, he took the Professional Middleweight Karate Championship title from Delgado and actually held and defended it for six years. In 1990, he was the first Westerner to be awarded an eighth degree black belt in Taekwondo. And if you look around the internet, there's a lot of people that make a really big deal about this. And it is. And I think that when we talked a couple weeks ago about Bruce Lee as an emissary of the martial arts, Chuck Norris has been almost as influential, but in a different way. And so for him to be kind of the first American, the first Westerner to come in and represent Korean martial arts in this country and really to the world, that's pretty significant. Now, it was in 1974 Chuck Norris's role in Return of the Dragon that really kicked off his acting career, even though he'd done some stuff beforehand. And actually, in a lot of the world, it's the role that he's best known for. And in doing research for this episode, I found something that I'm going to guess a lot of people haven't seen before. And it's a five-part cartoon miniseries from 1986 called Chuck Norris Karate Commandos. And we've got a link to the trailer over at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And I don't know if it still is, but apparently at one point it was in minor rotation late at night on the Adult Swim stuff on TV. So maybe you've seen it, maybe not. Now supposedly he's not quite done with acting. He said he retired, but I found a few references to this film called The Finisher that was supposed to start filming in March of this year. I can't find anything about it, nothing current, but we'll see if it ever pops up. Personally, I'm going to hope it does, because I think the last thing he was in was The Expendables 2, 3, 2, and that was a lot of fun just to see him on screen again and still having such a commanding presence. Now, one of the things I didn't know until I did this research was that Chuck Norris actually has a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and it doesn't look like it's any kind of honorary title. It's, it's a legitimate black belt, and it was awarded under Carlos Machado, who was actually in quite a few episodes of Walker, Texas Ranger, and they look like they've had a lot of time to train together. So while we all know Chuck Norris for his kicks, apparently he's got a pretty good ground game, too. He's received a lot of honorary titles, and I'm sure plenty of honorary black belts from martial arts schools. But the funniest honorary title that I found back in 2010, uh, then-Governor Rick Perry of Texas gave him the title, the honorary title of Texas Ranger. Now, how funny is that? You know, who who is more Texas Ranger than Walker Texas Ranger Chuck Norris? So I got a kick out of that. And we're all really familiar with those Chuck Norris facts, the, the funny ones. Chuck Norris doesn't do push-ups. He pushes the world down, you know, stuff like that. But I didn't realize those are about 10 years old. I don't remember the first time I heard about them, but I certainly don't remember having an aha moment of, oh, wow, this is a thing now. But, yep, started in 2005, and they can actually kind of pinpoint where they, where it started. I I forget the gentleman's name. There was a book written, Chuck Norris sued the guy, dropped the lawsuit, and has kind of embraced it now, which I think was a good move. And his favorite one, he's on record as saying, is that they wanted to add his face to Mount Rushmore, but the granite isn't hard enough for his beard. Finally, in 1990, he co-founded a charity called Kickstart Kids, and the mission was to, in their words, quote, build strong moral character in our youth through martial arts. And of course, that's still active, though unfortunately it's only in Texas. 
So that's it. Hopefully you learned a bit about Chuck Norris. If you're new to the Thursday shows, yes, we're intentionally keeping these short, just quick hits. Uh, they're easy for us to record in between the lengthy shows that we're doing. We've got some great stuff coming up. We recorded an amazing episode on Monday. It'll be a couple weeks before that's out. And you'll know it when you see it. So head on over to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com for all the show notes, links to the stuff that we talked about, uh, that video clip from Chuck Norris Karate Commandos that you'll want to check out. Remember, this is episode 43. So leave us some comments about what you thought on social media or on the website. And that's really about it. So if you want to follow us, we're on social media. We're Whistlekick pretty much everywhere. And that's really about it. So until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.